I'm here at the NBJ Summit with Pete Zambetti, Director of Global Business Development for Capsigel. Thank you for coming, Pete. Pleasure, Connor. Um, and he was recently, his company was recently acquired by KKR Holdings. So, Pete, why don't you tell us about that? Sure. Well, in a post-Pfizer era, uh, it's a whole new world for us. Uh, being part of a private equity company, KKR, has been real exciting for us. Uh, always having been part of a pharmaceutical company, it's a, it's a kind of a strange and pleasant departure from uh, previous hundred years. So for us, uh, you know, we have a parent now who has a, a different way of doing business than Pfizer, and we're really excited about it because it brings us a lot of opportunity. And as for your role specifically, uh, what are you working on as, as a global business development director? Well, I try to find the trends that are happening in the market before they happen. Looking around the world, I've got a base of 10 business development colleagues around the world and they have uh, allowed me the feet on the street which have really given me an opportunity to see what's going on in real time and then talk to our colleagues and then share things around the world so if something works well in Japan let's try it in China uh, knowing that the markets are drastically different but sometimes it works. Is there any one particular market you're especially excited about? Uh, well certainly China I think everybody's excited about. I spent the afternoon yesterday with the China Roundtable group which is very informative uh, and it also demonstrates the challenges that are to get into that market. Right. I mean, uh, people talk on the books of having about a $50,000 charge to get a product registered, where many people in the audience said it's closer to $500,000. Wow, wow. So the reality is much different than the regulations kind of dictate. So, okay. And that's what we see all over China. It's spotty, you know, implementation. Uh, but the regulations are there, and uh, there's, there's a willingness to change. Okay. Part of what I do is Capsigel. Uh, I'm also the chairman of a trade organization called Yadza, mm -hmm. and part of that organization's mission is to help regulators understand what good regulations are and try to drive them towards uh, a good regulatory system that can be uh, enforced. Okay. And I, I understand there's, there's pretty much a lot of challenges in, in harmonizing global regulations. You can't expect the same thing from one country to the other. Yeah, exactly true. I mean, even in Europe alone, you know, France will allow different levels of certain products than Italy will. So uh, that whole European harmonization is an issue uh, right now. Uh, but another project we're working on is the harmonization in the ASEAN region, which is 10 countries that make up this region. It's mm -hmm. about 500 million consumers. And it's an opportunity for us to, to bring that group together. And they have a mandate to be harmonized by 2015. So we've been working with folks there uh, on a regular basis and now have offices opened up in, uh, in Singapore to help be closer to that market. Okay. And uh, domestically in the United States, how would you describe the health of the, uh, of the nutrition market? I think pretty good, actually. It's, I think it's getting better almost every month, if not every year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what the GMPs have forced people to do is, is get up to speed or get out. And I right. think that's really important. And we're seeing more and more of those outliers getting taken out of the industry. And it's the, I wouldn't say even 80-20 rule, it's more like 90-10, where most companies really want to do a good job, mm -hmm. but struggle to uh, sometimes have the resources to do that. And sometimes, you know, just a little nudge in the right direction is all they need. But then there's others who are blatantly, you know, uh, being, you know, putting drugs into products, mm -hmm. which is not good for anyone. And those folks are criminals and have to be taken out of the industry completely. And all of the trade groups are in, uh, you know, aligned in trying to remove that element from the organ from the trade, you know, from the industry. Right. So. Um, what do you think it'll take to sort of push all of industry towards more credibility, more compliance? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, it's going to take every company to uh, assign someone or have somebody to take part in the industry, uh, you know, effort. It can't just be every man for himself. Uh, you know, there's a lot of companies making a lot of money and they're not doing anything to help the industry progress. And I think it should be mandated by the stores selling the products that if you're selling product in my store, you have to have some activity in the industry, be part of a trade organization or donate money for an education cause. Right. I think these are things that have to be done and there's a handful of companies that do this religiously and then there's a lot that don't. So I think it needs to be an effort that it's required to happen and then I think you'll see the industry step it up a, a notch. Okay. In terms of, in terms of uh, the health of American consumers and in terms of maybe products, is there one product category or condition that you think industry really needs to focus on for the future? Is there one thing that we really need to focus on hmm. to bring more health to more people? 
Well, I think uh, you know what people want versus what they should be doing. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's action different. versus aspiration, I guess. Uh -huh. But it's uh, I know obesity epidemic is huge, but it's not gonna the fix isn't gonna come in a pill. Right. It's gonna come more people stop eating bad food and making different choices. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a top of mind for everyone. But I think you know natural remedies uh, for things like heart health. Are, are things that people are much more akin to taking nowadays. Mm -hmm. And the science is getting better. I mean, 10 years ago, no one knew what krill even was. Right. Now there's several studies that demonstrate benefits for cholesterol and triglyceride lowering, where you know, five years ago, fish oil you know, got uh, put in as a drug, Lavaza, uh, because of its triglyceride lowering. So I think you're gonna see more movement in the omega-3 area. Uh, and a lot more science coming out that's going to demonstrate, uh, you know, really good stuff for a heart and uh, inflammation as well. Great. Um, what are you looking forward to most from the summit this year? Well, I think the networking is great. I think, uh, like a lot of people, you go over the attendee list on your way out here on the plane or on the drive or whatever, and you, you look to see, all right, who, who don't I know and who do I want to meet with? Mm -hmm. And this venue offers great opportunity. It's not high pressure. Every minute is filled with sessions, and that's what I like about the summit. It's that you can relax, you can see somebody and maybe not talk to them that afternoon, but see them at cocktails that evening. So mm -hmm. I think you have plenty of opportunity over the three days or so to get to know people and it's in a completely different venue than most of these trade shows. Okay. And as for um, the content that NBJ provides, what, what, what do you like about it and what, what, what would you like to see more of? What, what are you looking for as a business development director? Well certainly tr what's happening, what's coming next, you know, what's the latest science on an ingredient maybe that only a few people know about. Mm -hmm. That's what I really want to hear more about. And I think part of the summit is about the discourse in the industry and how people are frustrated. And that came out very clearly yesterday at the China table, round table, where you know, some companies are doing the right things and others are just not. And it's not about where the product comes from. It doesn't matter if it's India, China, or even the US. It's about your systems of quality control. And I think people have to recognize that if you're paying some ridiculously cheap price for a product, there's a reason for that. And I think uh, the industry has to recognize that if, there's, if its product is that cheap, there's something, you know, something fishy about it and they need to test it very carefully. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Pete, for talking to me today. Connor, Pete Zambetti of Capsigel. Thank you.